Hello, my name is Neil Fitzpatrick and I'm a psychologist. I'm also the author of a book called Tell Me the Truth About Loss. And I'm delighted to be here today for the Limerick Literary Festival. We're going to talk a little bit about handling hard times. So just to set the scene, I suppose, it's safe to say that life can be wonderful, but it can also be challenging. And 2020 and 2021 have really taken that idea of a challenging life to a whole other level. For most people, this is without reference point. This idea really of what happened us last year in March, it was almost March 2020. It was almost as if we woke up in the middle of a disaster movie. And some people might remember polio or TB, but for most people, there isn't a reference point for this. And we're just figuring it out as we go along. And I think what's interesting with this is that the other worries that we had in life or the other challenges that we had in life before the pandemic came along, they haven't paused just because we're in the middle of a global pandemic. So, you know, the worries around finances or the worries around, around relationships or the worries around work, they're still there. But now on top of that, we're dealing with living at a time of, of pandemic too. So, you know, this is big stuff. Emotionally, this is big stuff. And it's more important now than ever to mind our mental health. There's a psychologist who's actually a performance psychologist, a sports psychologist called Dr. Terry Orlick. And he said that an athlete hoping to distinguish themselves in competition without first having systematically mentally trained is like hoping God will come down at halftime and turn the game around. But as another psychologist said, but what if God's at another game? So in other words, if you're an athlete hoping to perform, you can't leave your mental side of your game to chance. You need to prep for that. And I think that actually holds for our mental state too, our mental health too, our mental well-being too. And in order to navigate hard times, we actually need to mind our mental health. Um, as I said, life changed for everybody in March 2020. Um, for me, life changed before that in March 2017. My sister Dara died overnight in a helicopter crash and it has just been the most horrific loss and the toughest time since. And so I suppose by the time the pandemic came around, I had spent three years really in those toughest times and I found that some of the things that helped me really handle those hard times after Dara's death have helped me also in dealing with this pandemic and I'm going to share some of those with you now today. So the first thing that you can do, the practical thing that you can do to mind your mental health and to navigate through this time is to understand your emotions. That's point number one, understand your emotions and what I mean by that is understanding that these are different times that you're going to feel different things that you normally would feel. So you might feel differently to how you normally do. You might feel any number of emotion states. You might lurch from one emotion state to another and, and perhaps back again. You just, might just not feel like yourself. But it's understanding that those emotions are normal response to a situation that we're in at the moment. Um, psychiatrist Viktor Frankl puts it really well when he says that an abnormal reaction to an abnormal situation is normal behaviour. When you think about that, that's what's happening now. We're in a situation that's wholly abnormal. So if you don't feel like yourself at the moment, that's okay. It's not pleasant, but it's okay and that's it's entirely normal. Um, the second thing that it's important to mind your mental health in order to sort of help navigate yourself through this time is to feel your feelings. So once you've acknowledge that your emotions are normal and that they're okay and that you don't need to judge them or judge yourself for having them then it's about feeling those feelings and it's about whatever you feel allowing yourself to feel that validating those feelings and saying to yourself I can understand how I would feel frustrated now or I can understand how I would feel scared now or resentful now or any of those things. And it's really saying that to yourself to validate those feelings, validate those feelings to allow you to, to, to go ahead and then feel them. And with your emotions, I want you to think of them as being like the amber lights on the dashboard of a car. You know, you get into a car and um, turn on the ignition and the, all the lights come on the dashboard and then some of those lights go off. 
But perhaps, say, if the fuel ga gauge stays on, the little orange petrol pump light, well, that light itself isn't either good nor bad nor right nor wrong. There's nothing to be judged about it. But it just tells us that something needs our attention. We need to get to Apple Green and, and fill up the car. Well, it's the same thing with the emotions. What do your emotions tell you need attention in your life? Um, because it, it, if you could ask yourself that question and say, you know, what might my emotions be talking to me about now and telling me needs my attention? It could be that you feel frustrated because all the people in your household are working from home and that you've got no space for yourself. It might be because you're telling you that you're anxious because you have a loved one who's vulnerable to COVID. It could be grief you're feeling because you've lost somebody this year or last year or before even the pandemic. It could be you that you're feeling exhaustion at being in lockdown all over again or frazzled because you're trying to homeschool. So it's really about this piece here is about naming your feelings and allowing yourself to feel them without judgment or without denial. Um, and, you know, maybe finding the way to express those feelings. So for some people, you will talk them out. For others, you'll write them. Somebody else might run them out. Somebody else might sing them out. It doesn't matter how you express your feelings, but I want you, in order to mind your mental health, I want you to get used to and making sure that you allow yourself to express those feelings, even the ugly ones, even the ones that aren't that aren't pretty. And if you remember a couple of years ago, there was a football team from Thailand, young boys in a football team who got lost in or trapped, I should say, in a cave system because the rains had come in and flooded the place where they came into the caves. And initially, when they were found, they were discovered. It was thought that perhaps they would keep them in the caves for a while and send supplies down. And when the rains went, that maybe then they would take them out. But of course, it was realised then by the rescuers that that wasn't going to be possible. That wasn't going to be the thing that they needed to do. They needed to get them out of the caves. And how did they do that? Well, they sedated the football team, the young players, and they strapped them to divers and took them through underground, underwater chambers, out through the cave system. And really, when you think about it, there was, when we saw that, there was only one way out of that cave system. Your emotions are the same way. There's only one way out of your feelings, and that's to feel them. So I want you to think about the fact that your feelings don't make you weak. They just make you human. And it's about seeing about how you can feel those feelings, how you can express those without, as I said, judgment or denial, but just allowing yourself doing that. The third thing that you can do to help your mental health and to help yourself navigate this hard time that we're in now is to think about a useful attitude. And so notice I haven't said a positive attitude, because for me, I don't care if you never have another positive thought in your life. Positive thinking is so far for most of us. Our thinking is less about being positive and more about being useful. And by that, I mean, will this approach, will this cognitive approach, this mental approach, will it serve me? Will it help me? Is it good for me? Is it in my interests? That's what we're talking about here. So to give you some examples, a useful attitude would be instead of saying this is our new normal, which is a dreadful expression, in my opinion, it would be more useful to say, well, this is maybe our normal for now, because as soon as we say it's our new normal, we get that sense of this is how we're always going to be living. But this isn't how we're always going to be living. This is how we need to live for now. And that means that at some stage it won't be how we're going to need to live. So it's really in terms of a useful attitude saying this is how we need to do things now but there will come a point where life will be different again. That's really useful for us to allow us to get on one foot in front of another and keep handling this life in a pandemic. Uh, something else that would be a useful way of looking something would be instead of talking about homeschooling, to think about what a colleague of mine, Dr. Mary O'Kane, says is emergency education. It's so different when you think that you're doing emergency education with young people in your life rather than doing homeschooling because there's a set of expectations around the homeschooling whereas actually there's just a letting the pressure off with a sense of emergency education. And so it's really thinking about those little ways that you can look at this that actually can make a big difference. Something else that'll be important is thinking about surviving, not thriving. 
Thriving can wait. There's plenty of time for that. Now it's about surviving. It's about putting one foot in front of the other and getting through. And so in those regards, in that regard, I want you to think of the expression good enough. And maybe instead of expecting, I suppose, what you might have thought for yourself and for life and for others from previous times that you say, well, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to think about good enough. What's good enough? Because that gets the job done. That's all we're looking for. It's not about excellence. Um, it's just about, you know, good, good enough and getting through today and then just repeat. Um, the fourth thing that would be a really good thing to do to help your mental health is to take micro breaks. And what I mean from this is really it's these are about mental breathers from the pandemic because it's 24 seven. It's all around. It's around on our news. It's around on our phones. It's around in how we live our life. We can't go to the supermarket without thinking of the pandemic, you know, and um, we're in our homes. We're staying at home. So this is really all around us. So what can be a really useful thing to do is to find small things you like. And this could be, you know, a five minute thing, 10 minute thing, 15 minute thing, small things you like and schedule them into your day and keep those appointments with yourself for those schedule things into your day and these won't make COVID go away it doesn't make things all right again but what it does is it just gives you a little mental breather from the onslaught of bad news or information or figures and that can allow you almost catch your breath and go on again so what it really does is it it, it stops COVID from sucking the joy the complete joy out of life and so I'm talking about things here for some people, a little thing that they might like doing. It could be it could be a bath. It could be um, watching a film. It could be reading a book by the fire. It could be going for a walk. It could be throwing a stick with your dog. It doesn't really matter what it is. It could be gardening. It's finding the little things that you like to do, but not maybe just happening upon them. Instead, scheduling them into your day. Really, really important and very useful. Something else that's terribly useful when it comes to sort of, you know, minding your mind and getting yourself through this is having a reality check. Are you being reasonable with what you expect of yourself, of life and of others right now? That's really important. Remember, going back to we're not in normal times. So it's not about dropping excellence and dropping expectations and dropping ambition, but it's certainly about managing it and understanding that. Really, we need to be realistic with what we expect from everybody now at this time. And and I suppose for me, that's about starting valuing getting through and, and valuing that piece of good enough and saying to myself, you know, or to yourself that I don't have to emerge from this a better parent or a better person or um, a better baker. I just need to get through it. I just need to navigate my way through this. And it doesn't have to be pretty. I just need to get the job done. So in the reality check thing, I want you to value surviving because it's really important. Something else in the reality check thing is to think of things in small chunks. I see people thinking of things in too big of a chunk. And I want you to chunk things down and think of increments. Think of small increments. So looking at today, looking at this week, looking at this month, not looking to the summer holidays not looking to Christmas. They're too big of a chunk. So it's really being realistic in your approach to even time. The next thing that's really good for your mental health is to take care of the sort of wellness basics. So I want you to think of a table and think of four legs on that table. And each of those legs is one of the wellness basics. And when you pay attention to those, you make it more likely that your table will stay upright and not crash to the floor. So the four legs of the table would be sleep, nutrition, movement and connection. So it's really looking at your life in terms of your sleep and your rest and seeing what is it like, your nutrition and hydration, your movement and fresh air and your connection. And maybe if mentally and emotionally you're not in the best place, just going to some of those and having a look and seeing, well, Actually, am I getting my sleep? Actually, am I connected or am I overloaded with too many people and have no space to myself? Or am I isolated with nobody uh, in my world at all in terms of connection? And just looking at those 
wellness basics and seeing what can you do to incrementally improve wherever you are in those. That will help your mental health. It's a bit like it's a bit like saying you're going to mind your body so that your body can mind you. It can be really helpful. Um, something else that's important is the idea of adaptation. I want you to think about this as being a time to adapt. So there's a psychologist called Martin Seligman, and he talks about the three P's, personal, pervasive, and permanent. Don't mind the other two. The one that I'm interested in here is permanent. And it's thinking to yourself about that bit that life as we live it now is not permanent. This is our normal for now. It's not our new normal. And so when you see it that way, it can actually help you to adapt to what we need to adapt because this thing evolves and continues to evolve and will, will continue to evolve. And what we need to do is to evolve with it. And so it's maybe thinking about some of the things that you do now in life uh, or that you like now in life but can't get to do the way you would like them to do and just considering how you might adapt them. What are the ways that, you know, can't really do it the way I'd like but I could do it this way instead. Mentally, that's really good for us because there's a flexibility in that rather than a rigidity. And that's what we want for us emotionally is getting through tough times is about being adaptable. It's about being flexible. And that's really sort of from a, a mind perspective where we want to be. So there's two words that can really help us with this. And those words are preference and tolerate. So it's about saying to yourself, I would prefer to live life as I normally do. But I can tolerate living like this for the moment until we're out of this pandemic because it will keep everybody safe. Or I would prefer to see all my friends at the moment, but I can tolerate just seeing one or two safely and from a distance because, again, it will keep everybody safe. So thinking of the word preference and the word tolerance is or tolerate is really useful for us. And mentally, when you think of these tough times as the one that we're living in now, I want you to think of it in terms of a comma, not a full stop in your life. So it's understanding that this pauses us, stops us, holds us, but it's not a full stop. It's not a stop forever. It's a time after which we will go on again. Life will be different, but we will still go on again. And it's looking at that and this time as a comma in your life, it can just help you to adapt to it. And also on the adaptation thing, it's realizing that you've adapted before. You've been adapting your whole life. And the amount of things that you have tweaked and changed and, and moved and shifted in your life in the last year, the amount of things are immense. So it's also backing yourself and understanding that you can do this, that you are doing this that it mightn't feel great at times and it mightn't look pretty, but that you're actually doing this. So it's really that bit around being aware of your strengths and resources, being aware that you've adapted so much in life and finding the ways to really back yourself and say, look, I've done this before. I can do this again. Something else that's really important is to focus on what you can do rather than what you can't. So, you know, so much of our lives are out of control at this time. And when that happens, it's really important to make sure that we put some effort and focus on what are the things that we can control, even amid, amid and amongst, I suppose, a wider picture of the fact that there's lots that we can't. So we can't control the numbers. We can't control the decisions made about how we live our life in terms of what's open, what's not open, what lockdown level we're in. But we can control whether we adhere to guidelines. We can control whether we mind ourselves and others around us. We can control whether you um, mind the four legs of the table, whether you feel your feelings, whether you take micro breaks. There's all those little things that we can do to actually influence in some ways what's going on in our life. And mentally, that's really important that we do that that we don't feel that there's nothing that we can do that we're completely help, helpless. Because the reality is it's, it can feel like we are, but actually there are things we can control. And I want you to get your mind focused on those. Something else that's really important is our relationships. We're social creatures. We're such social creatures. That's one of the reasons why this pandemic is causing such struggle because it's tearing us apart when we want to be together. So it's understanding that that relationship piece 
has been squeezed so much. So maybe you live in a house with others in a family home or a shared home. Maybe you live on your own. Um, either way, relationships have been squeezed. And whether they are personal relationships or professional relationships, they've been squeezed so much. So it's understanding actually that as social creatures with relationships that have been squeezed so much, for our own mental health, we do need to pay attention to what's going on in those relationships. And what I really want you to do in that regard is I want you to understand that conflict is inevitable, that in any relationship, conflict is inevitable. And the trick is to plan for it. So what can we do to plan for it? Well, you can sit down and you can talk to the people in your life and find out what everybody's needs are. So if you're in a house with other people, some people will need space, some people will need connection, some people will need to be listened to. And it's understanding what are everybody's needs and how can we do whatever we can do within this house to in order to, as much as we can, meet people's needs. So it's just looking after the relationship piece in that regard that will pay dividends, that will come back to you and pay dividends. Um, thinking about the relationships with people who aren't in our daily life, so we're not living with them, we're separated from them and that's the problem in that relationship. I want you to think here about the fact that when somebody dies, love doesn't die with that person. You know, the expression is that death ends a relationship, but death ends a life, not a relationship. So what we really know is that, you know, connection doesn't rely solely on physical presence. We can feel connected to somebody even though they're not here, which is, as I said, what we need to do when somebody dies. We find a new way to relate to them. And that's really what we're having to do with those people who we're separate from at this time. And I want you in this to think creatively and to think in terms of quality. So if you want to stay connected with people that you are separate from and need to be separate from, then it's about being creative. So maybe if you do a grocery shop for a loved one, for example, an online grocery shop and have it delivered or you deliver it, you, what you might do is you might find a couple of little things that aren't on their shopping list, but you know they like, and just pop it in there into the delivery. It could be that you leave groceries or flowers on a doorstep unexpected within your 5K and safely, obviously. Um, it could be that you remember dates that matter to the people who you love but aren't you aren't with them. It can be that you ask about those things that happen in their life that you know they care about. And it's understanding that really, you know, that sense of connection, it doesn't rely on the physical presence. And if you go after the quality of what you're doing in your relationships, you can help in terms of feeling connected. Um, and also, I think maybe thinking about people who might be on their own. So, you know, people who aren't living in a house with a lot of people or who aren't together with their loved ones, who might be in a separate county or a separate country, for example. And just, you know, thinking about the fact that loneliness is a terrible experience for anybody of any age and really thinking about what you might be able to do in, other in order to perhaps help somebody who perhaps could be lonely. And it's not assuming that they're lonely just because they live alone, but it's just really having an awareness about that, I suppose. And if you are living alone and finding it more difficult now in this lockdown, there's some things that you can do as well to mind your mental health in this time. And they would be things like adapting your daily exercise routine so that you see people. So you're staying within your 5K, but perhaps instead of going somewhere where you might be solitary, you might pass by somewhere where you're going to see people along your route. Little things like that can make a difference. Or doing a daily takeaway coffee run just to have some human connection. Making sure that you plan the personal virtual connections. You know, I know everybody is so sick of Zoom or so sick of FaceTime or WhatsApp videos, but actually, especially if you are living alone, it's making sure that you pop some of those into your schedule at some times because it's really important to stay connected. And so to, con to conclude, I suppose, what I'd say is it is really important that we mind our mental health and there are loads of ways that we can do that. And some of those that we've talked about here today are 
really understanding your emotions and knowing that whatever you feel now, even if it's very different to what you would normally feel, it's okay. You're not losing your mind. There's nothing wrong with you. It's a normal response to what is an abnormal situation. And then it was understanding about that you have to feel those feelings. There's no other way through it. You have to find a way to express those feelings that you have. And sometimes that's going to be about talking about them, writing about them. Sometimes also it's going to be to deal with your feelings. It's about doing something practical. So if you found that you were frustrated, that your emotions were telling you that you're frustrated because you're living in a house where there's so many people in that house and there's no space for you. Uh, one thing you might do in action you might do is you might say, I'm going to get up early in the morning and I'm going to come down when it's quiet and have a cup of tea before the house gets up. And so, you know, feeling the feelings and actioning those feelings are going to be practical things that you can do to help yourself. Acknowledging all you've done to adapt so far and backing yourself to be able to do that again. Minding the four legs of the table, you know, thinking about your sleep and your rest, pockets of rest, uh, thinking about your nutrition and hydration, thinking about your fresh air and movement and thinking about your connection and just looking to see what you're doing for yourself on those all those four legs of the table the, the, the wellness basics if you like and seeing if you can do a little bit more perhaps to bring yourself up incrementally with them it's about taking micro breaks it's about minding your relationships it's about placing a value on getting through and surviving and all of those things they sound like such little things, and in some ways they are little things, but when you put them all together, what you can get is a really nice plan, a nice systematic plan for minding your mental health. And the more that you do that, the more chance you give yourself to navigate your way through this tough time. Because one day this will be behind us. One day we will talk about COVID in the past. I know that seems unbelievable now, and there certainly will be a legacy left with it. So there will be a destructive legacy. There will also be a constructive legacy left with it. But one day it will be in the past. And so this is about consciously minding your mental health and giving yourself the best chance to weather the next months that we have to live in this time. And in that instance, you are doing yourself the best favor you can do and giving yourself the best gift you can do and like we said at the start you're not hoping that God will come down and change the game turn the game around you're not hoping that somebody else will help you get through this you're helping yourself get through this and there's something really powerful about this so wherever you are and however life is for you at the moment my warmest wishes to you I hope you've taken some little bits and pieces out of this. There might be one or two things in it that you can take and use and bring into your own life. And thank you for watching. Have a lovely festival. Um, best of luck.